All right, guys, today we are going to be talking about something that I don't feel is mentioned often enough, but also totally worth mentioning, and that is over the years, bushcraft and survival gear that I have gotten that I honestly don't regret buying. Some of the stuff I've bought back over the course of the years, but this is a handful of survival equipment, bushcraft equipment that I've bought that I just do have zero regrets. Some of the stuff I've even bought multiples of just because it's that good and I believe in it that much. So anyways, we're gonna jump into this. There really isn't any order to this or any rhyme or reason. We're just jumping into it. So. Without any further ado, let's jump right into the first one, and that is going to be the Topps Fieldcraft. Now, this knife, I'm not going to lie, has many imperfections. It is not the best knife for wilderness survival or bushcrafting, but I'll be damned if this isn't at least a decent knife for doing a broad and wide variety of different wilderness tasks. And I can tell you, rest assured, if you don't believe me, there are dozens of years of experience built into this knife. It just works, and that's why it's a perennial bestseller and favorite among the people at Tops. That's why they haven't gotten rid of it. And they've made all kinds of spin-offs, smaller versions, thinner versions, different steel versions of this knife. But the core principle, the ergonomics, and the overall dimensions and just design stay the same throughout the years. So the Tops Fieldcraft by Brothers of Bushcraft is a fantastic knife. And it's one of my first actual bushcrafting knives, like outside of the Mora Clipper Companion and those kind of things. It was one of my first knives that I got. It was actually a really decent bushcrafting knife. Now, in a similar vein to decent or good bushcrafting knives, we are going to talk about none other than the Bark River Knives Bushcrafter, a knife that I personally feel does not get enough love and attention. This is probably one of the best bushcrafting knives out there, in my opinion. Of course, this is just my opinion, but I feel like this is one of the best bushcrafting knives that you can buy hands down if you are serious about bushcrafting. I wouldn't necessarily recommend this for just your average run-of-the-mill person whose first time out in the wilderness um, but if you are someone who really enjoys bushcrafting and you really enjoy that side of life and you want to have a knife that is very capable the bark river knives bushcrafter particularly the original sized version original thickness version in a 5 30 seconds of an inch thick with cpm 3v steel which is what this guy is is unbeatable especially for its price especially nowadays because i know when this knife came out back in the good old days it feels like it's been a while and it's been over 10 years since this knife came out but back in the day when this knife was dropped its price point has basically stayed the same but it was about 250 50 to 280 dollars and a little bit lower for these um, micarta handled versions like this guy's about 230 but when you look at it competitively speaking against things like winklers uh, knives and others whose prices have actually continued to, to grow you see that this knife is an incredible value even up against things like half face blades um, and other different options like montana knife company and stuff fantastic option. Um, the Bark River Knives Bushcrafter is just simply unbeatable. And like I've said in many other videos, in my opinion specifically, um, and of course my video, uh, I feel like Bark River Knives makes some of the best ergonomic knives out there. Like they fit your hand like a glove. All right, next one up is going to be a controversial pick by the Silky Gomboy. Now, the reason why I chose the Gomboy specifically, I do have a big boy, I love it. I do have a Baco Laplander, it's also good, but I feel like penny for pound and also just overall performance for the size of the tool, the 210 Gomboy and the 240 Gomboy are some of the best saws that you can get for being outdoors, whether it's survival, bushcraft, anything. These guys are something that you can carry in a cargo pocket, something that you can carry in a backpack, something that you can very easily, very man portable, you know, like very easy to carry, very man portable, and it just offers so much performance. This blade absolutely shreds through wood, especially in my opinion, if you get the curved blade option, you get a little bit extra length an actual cutting edge for what you're getting. And so for me, I would say the curved version is my preference, but even the straight edged versions of the Gone Boy, 
there's so hard to argue with this knife or not knife but saw because it packs so much performance for its size all right Moving into the last true knife of the list, of course, the Chris Reeve Knives Pacific. You guys know I have never regretted owning this knife ever since I bought it. It is a fantastic knife. Of course, I've modified it to be a little bit more survival friendly, but this is a really, really excellent blade. Mine has a few little dings in the, the edge that it's gotten over the course of the years but outside of that it is absolutely razor sharp i try to keep up you know keep up the edge keep it in really good condition and this tool absolutely is just performance driven once again probably not my favorite steel option this is the cpm s35 vn but they now have them in cpm 4v and they are now releasing them in cpm magna cut and while magna cut is not my favorite steel i actually like 3v for wilderness blades a lot more cpm magna cut is a really solid option better than the s35 vn but yeah so overall really fantastic knife i really can't say anything about it now as a quick aside we're just going to quickly glance at this one this is a piece of survival equipment as you guys can see very dirty very well worn right um, but this is a piece of survival equipment i have never regretted owning and this is the um, janus pocket extension by maxpedition i believe they still make these but they're a little bit elusive this guy for me i think is one of my favorite pieces of gear to carry other gear because the Janus pocket extension, at least in my opinion, is the smallest possible footprint that you can get to carry a realistic full-on survival kit. Obviously, minus or sans knife, saw, axe, or hatchet, you know, the, the core tools that you're going to be using for survival they won't be in here but outside of those we're talking this has cliff bars instant coffee mylar blankets um, condoms for water collection there's a small first aid kit in here with some things like benadryl for allergic reactions and some things like tylenol and advil for pain relief um, just overall realistically speaking a hyper condensed kit but has extensively just about everything you need and if you're smart about space management you can outfit an incredible incredible survival kit and there's so much more that i forgot to mention in this kit but there is so much to this survival kit absolutely incredible um, and i'm not trying to just pat myself on the back i didn't make the survival kit but the janus pocket extension for me has to be on the list because it is the catalyst for the survival kit it is not only a very compact package like overall but it also offers enough size to jam a ton of things in and on it all right next two up are going to be multi-tools the first one is the leatherman surge this is my generation two leatherman surge but the generation one leatherman surge also works just fine in this role as well Anyways, so the Leatherman Surge Generation 1 is my personal favorite, but Generation 2 is what you guys see here. And overall, it is just a really solid tool. These things, Leatherman Surges, are not only the largest and most heavy duty multi-tool in the Leatherman lineup, as far as they're more like typical plier-based multi-tools go, but it also is the most feature rich and just offers a ton ton of selection of really solid tools from its blades to its um, swappable t-shank adapter for your saw blade there's really not much that the leatherman surge can't do and for that reason i own multiple and for that reason it is just one of the best just absolutely best multi-tools for survival and wilderness overall all right, next up to that is going to be my favorite Swiss Army knife. And this is the, I believe, discontinued, but Victorinox Ranger. The Victorinox Ranger is not my favorite multi-tool. Once again, I'm not as large of a fan of Swiss Army tool or Swiss Army knife based multi-tools. But if I had to choose one, I would say that the Victorinox Ranger is probably my top choice because it has pretty much everything you would want 
for a survival situation and just about nothing you wouldn't. Obviously, you will be able to find little things like this micro flathead screwdriver that are not very applicable to the outdoors, but just about everything else. You have a chisel, you have a parcel hook, you have a file, you have um, all kinds of things, awls, knives, um, pretty much everything that you would want in a you know multi-tool this is going to have in it and so the ranger in my opinion is the closest swiss army knife um, multi-tool to having a, a genuine like form factor and tool set that i would actually want for a wilderness survival situation and for those reasons once again it is also added to the list of tools that i do not regret buying all right, last one up and kind of finishing it, or last couple up, I should say, is going to be the Vargo Titanium Bot. I feel like I talk about the Vargo Bot entirely too much, but this really is my solution and problem solver when it comes to doing most camp cooking and camp water things, because the Vargo Bot is basically an ultra wide mouth bottle that you can use to cook things, you can use to make coffee, you can use it to make tea, you can use it to boil water, you can use it to do just about anything you need. This thing is so incredibly versatile. And then the other thing I love about it is because this is titanium, this thing is pretty large. You guys can see here, it can hold up to a liter of water, but it is very lightweight like this thing weighs practically nothing i also as you guys can probably see um, by this kind of rat's nest around the top of it that is actually the bot hanger so it's what you use to hang it from you know like trees or whatever you know to boil your um, bot over or put your bot over a fire so you can boil water i should say um, but the vargo bot is one of my favorite solutions to cooking i do also like my um, boy scouts of america mess kit as well those are probably my go-to two things for cooking between those two like the bot and the bsa mess kit um, there's really nothing that you can't make as far as food goes so though i will say the bot is still my number one and i absolutely have no regrets purchasing it all right, last place, or finally getting down to the wire, is going to be GBA axes. Some people here of late have been talking mad, mad smack about GBA tools. And to be fair, maybe they've changed their formulation, but all of my GBAs, my newer and my older ones that I own, which are a few years old, my newest one, um, but these things are just incredible. I absolutely love my GBA wildlife hatchet that you guys saw earlier, and my Scandi forest axe, which is what you guys are looking at right now. I don't tend to use my Scandi Forest Axe all too much at the moment, but the Scandi Forest Axe, absolutely incredible tool. This thing eats wood for breakfast and is an incredible tool. Both of them are very well made. And I think a lot of people, you know, trash on the GBA um, tools because they don't chop wood or don't perform the way that they want them to. And that is largely, unfortunately, when it comes to GBA's axes, these are made in Sweden, of course, which is a very similar climate and condition to Alaska. So a lot of the wood that they have there, that they buck, that they fell, is going Going to be very similar to the wood that is in Alaska. If you try to take these axes and cut through, say, a piece of hickory, you will be in for a rude awakening because the woods that we have up here in Alaska, like the different varieties of trees, are often more soft woods. So these tools, um, these axes and hatchets specifically by GBA, are designed to bite very deep into softer woods as opposed to breaking up and chipping the large, harder woods such as hickory and oaks. So it's a little bit of a different style, but for someone like myself, I absolutely find GBA axes and hatchets completely indispensable. And once again, I have no regrets in any of the GBA tools that I've bought in, in their performance. So anyways, guys, hopefully you enjoyed the video and taking a look at some of the wilderness and outdoor tools, especially bushcraft and survival tools that I have bought over the course of the years that I have zero regrets about. Anyways, guys, as always, God bless and I'm out.